I have an external hard drive enclosure here. A customer brought me this in. He says he's had this for many, many years. And recently he had some sort of power surge in his house. He was saying something about the 415 volts arcing over to the 220 volts. I guess he's talking about three phase and single phase. And it blew every single power adapter in the house. So, a little bit of a disaster there, but one of the things that isn't working is this. So, this is his external hard drive where there's highly valued data on apparently, but not valued enough to actually make a backup copy. <laughs> you only find out how valuable it is when you realise what you should have done. So, he's fitted a new power adapter on this. The power adapter powers up. But the hard drive doesn't work. And I've actually tried it, so I have tried this on the USB and it doesn't work. He asked me if I could fix this, so basically he really is just interested in getting the data off this drive. So let's have a look to see what we have. I mean, normally speaking, how I would fix this is I would open it up, I would take the hard drive out, attach it to the computer on a SATA cable and power it up that way as an internal drive. Oh, yeah. And I'm not actually going to do that the first thing I can see anyway because, in fact, this is not a SATA drive. This is an IDE drive. Uh, this is old. Full of old, important, valuable data and photos. So that's what we have. What I will do is connect this then to a motherboard. In fact, I commented a few weeks ago how useful it was to keep a motherboard that has both SATA and IDE. You can get a socket 775 board, dual core, quad core, Celeron for nothing basically these days. And that has what you need, SATA and IDE. So you can boot from a SATA drive and see if we can access the IDE drive. Of course, you could use an older motherboard and boot from another IDE drive, but I'm just thinking your operating system or your spare one is probably a SATA, yeah. So let's connect this up and let's have a look to see if we can access this drive. I have my test board connected up then, so as I say, this one has SATA and IDE. It's ideal for this sort of work. We'll just test it first. This is without a hard drive. Yeah, you can see it is actually booting up. Okay, so let's put our boot drive on. Let's put this other drive on. Let's see what it actually does. Okay, this is my little uh, 60 gig SSD, but it's absolutely ideal to make a test drive like this. So we'll connect this one. Okay, and I also have the IDE drive attached. So let's see what it does. See if it will boot from my SSD. Nice right, booting. I don't hear the drive spinning. Oh, something's hot on here, guys. Something's getting hot on here, yeah? It's down here. I think something was getting too warm. Let's have a look. Disconnect the ID key. down here okay I have the thermal camera let's just try this again so I've disconnected the IDE cable I just have the power attached at the moment see what happens switch the power supply on that's what happens yeah so it does oh yeah there's something very very hot here Okay, and then it goes cold. It's that. It's that. I can feel it warm. Okay, that is what it is. So let's have a look see what that is. The thing that was getting hot is that. And that may look like a capacitor, especially because it says 16 volts on it. There's another one there. 
But this is not a capacitor. This is like a resettable fuse. Let me show you. So I think that funny symbol there, unless it's the manufacturer, basically represents a fuse. And 125F16V is the part number. And that is this thing, poly switch resettable devices, little fuse. It's a fuse, for sure. Okay, so they are effectively like fuses. And it's getting very hot. So there must be too much current flowing through here, which would suggest there's a short. Now, because I know the history of this, i.e. there has been some sort of power surge, I've got a very good idea of what the fault's going to be. And this is just from seeing it before. So here we have the power. This is the power coming in, okay? In fact, it's marked 12 volts, 5 volts. This is ground. And if we look, 12 volts comes to this thing. And then through this thing, it goes to this thing. Now, this is almost certainly like a zener diode or a similar device. It says, looks like a D8624 on it. But what I think this is, is a type of diode called a TVS or transient voltage suppressor. And it's like a zener diode, but it's bi-directional. And when they effectively are subjected to a transient, they go short. So it is a protection device. Strangely enough, very much like those crowbar circuits we've been looking at recently, if you've been watching my videos. Yeah, all about crowbars. Well, I think we've got another one here, effectively. And also, if we look on the other inputs, so this is the 5 volts. It goes for another one of these and to a very similar device there. They mark like a diode, they look kind of like a zenith. So, let's have a look. This one reads short, okay? And this one I'm just going to diode mode. So this one in this direction you may well read like a diode. Yeah, so it's like a zenith. It is a zenith. The TVS wouldn't read like a diode in one direction. This one reads short, and almost certainly that's what's wrong with this. So one end of this would go to ground. Zero. It's reading zero. It's reading zero from 12. So because it's reading a zero both ways, not like a higher resistance from one end, zero, zero. I think it's just gone dead short. It's not possible to say because a short could be somewhere else, but that is the most likely culprit. So let's remove that from the board and check it. To remove this, I'll probably use hot air. And if I'm going to use hot air, I will remove the PCB from the drive. But I may be able to just remove it with a soldering iron with it on there. Although, to be honest, guys, really, removing this is the best bet. And I'll probably end up doing this anyway. But let's see if we can unsolder this. Okay, if not, I say I shall just, just remove the PCB. Just get a lot of heating from one side. Ah, look, it's off, yeah. So, fair enough, that came off easily enough. Let's have a look to see if the short circuit has gone. And yes, it has. So that's remove the short off the 12 volts. If we go to the 5 volts, that isn't short either. So because this is a protection device, just to prevent any high voltage getting down here, and because I trust my power supply, and I really want to get the data off this drive anyway, I don't totally trust it if it does boot up. I can power this drive up without that. But the other possibility, if we find some other drives, 
you will see. So this one is a Samsung. This is a Mac store IDE, an old one. But you'll find the same sort of thing again. In this case, it's mounted here. One end will go to the 12 volts. And read like a diode. The other end goes to the 0 volts. So if you have another scrap one or an old drive that you don't need, you can always take the part off here and fit it onto that one. Firstly though, I'm actually going to power this up because I do trust my power supply and really I just want to get the data off this. If it's working, I'll copy the data to another drive, put it in the enclosure. I'll give them this one back just as a spare, just time to keep it on one side. I may well actually replace this thing off with another unused one or scrap one. Okay, so there we are. You will find exactly the same sort of protection diodes or TVS diodes on SATA drives. The only real difference with the TVS and the Zener diodes is that the Zener diodes will read like a normal diode, dropping about 5.6 volts in one direction, the reverse bias direction compared with this. So with the positive to ground, negatively to either 5 or 12, you will read a diode just a normal diode and with the TVS they just read open in both directions. Let's see what this one does now. I can hear the hard drive now. I'm not sure it's working but I can hear it so let's see what happens. I think it may have, yes it's found it. So it's found both hard drives, that's good. And I've just realised this old motherboard will not boot from my SATA drive because this is UEFI. I need a non UEFI drive to boot from, I'll find one. This just goes to show guys the amount of stuff you need on one side. For this sort of work, non UEFI Windows 10 for older motherboards. Let's see if it will boot from this hard drive. It's my soldering iron going to sleep, by the way, if you wondered. Well, it's looking like it's going to boot up. It's found both drives. Yep. So far, so good. Okay. Let's see if we can access the data on this drive. If we can't, then I can just put another drive on the system and copy the data off and all is good. I don't have the drivers with the graphics card loaded, so it's just running in whatever screen mode that is, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Let's have it what we have. Well, it's actually opened twice, but I can see the drive. So this is the guy's hard drive, oh, ebooks, film, series download, photos, iTunes, yeah, stuff like that. The guy's a Dutch guy, by the way. Photos of my mother and father. So this is looking good. This is what he really wanted. Okay, I don't think this is a personal photo, so we can go with this one, I think. Will it display? Uh, um, yes. Okay, so I can access the data on the drive. I will now add another drive to this, copy all this data off, and the job is done. Oh, Carnival Grand Canaria 2005. This is an old one. Oh, you should really see the Grand Canaria Carnival, guys. It's something out of this world. It's actually on the not this weekend, the weekend after, and I will be there, yeah. So this is Carnival, yeah. 2005, wow. Okay, guys, that's just a kind of cheap and nasty way to repair these. At least to get the data off, you'll find this is quite common. All you need to do is remove the thing and copy all your data away. Or, as I said before, put another one on from another hard drive, a scrap one or just one you don't need anymore. Okay, guys, short one. Hope you liked it anyway. 
something else maybe you've learned and i'll see you all soon on another learn electronics repair video ciao for now guys